And it seems that our bon ton is moving with the changing tide. So too is this author. I cannot live at home any longer. I must take a husband. Does my lady have a suitor in mind? Is that her brother? Colin? Both of you guys knew when, during the production of season two that Colin and Penelope's story was set to be the third season in yes. the order of the books. It would have been Benedict's, but how did they tell you? And how long did you guys have to keep it a secret from everyone else? Basically got a phone call from Jess Barnell. We knew she was taking over as showrunner from the lovely Chris Van Dusen. And I thought it was just a general courtesy call to be like, hey, just checking in with you. But yeah. she was like, yeah, we feel like actually it's Colin and Penn's time. And I was like, whoa, okay, that's yeah. a lot. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> yeah, and... yeah, it was, re it was kind of like, overwhelming but also I, I was just so excited like you never know when you mm. start a show like this that you're going to get the opportunity no um obviously there was like the vision of at some point maybe exploring the book that's based on colin and Penn. but mm. um yeah being told that it's happening and and i know like nick has said before that um it felt like they trusted us in these roles enough to give us the opportunity yeah, to nice do that so, confidence. yeah it was great what has helped the two of you bring the best of each other out in a scene. Our friendship yeah. and our chemistry and connection yeah. as ourselves. Yeah, I think. Uh, Jess is a really considerate uh, person to work with. She's on her lines. She's so, really like, professional. <laughs> yeah. um, she doesn't take herself really seriously, but is very committed to doing a wonderful job and really respects the piece. And um, same, same for Claudia, you, you, <laughs> thank you're you. also listing yourself too. <laughs> so it's a, a really easy to work together actually. Yeah. And we were buzzing about it as well. Cause like, you know, there's so many of us in Bridgerton. We don't always get to be in scenes together. Mm. I think there's siblings I've not spoken to in, the, <laughs> in Bridgerton. There's so many of us. So it's like a real pleasure. And it was, yeah, the best eight months ever. Yeah. You had posted something to Instagram, basically, it was the deadline article announcing you oh, had been- that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, she's like, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> and you had just got, you know, social media with the caption that said, you know, terrified, I'll work my socks off. I want to know now that you're kind of at the end of it almost, have you overcome that terror? And was there a specific moment where you thought, yeah, I've really got this? Uh, <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, I've really got this. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was really scary. And I think the imposter syndrome on this job was probably the worst I've ever experienced in my life. Even though everybody was so, so lovely, I just wanted to do a good job that I think it hit a point one day that I was like, I can't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm hurting myself. I'm not like, I can't keep doing this. So then it went, the other way to extremes where we were just like giddy on mm, set and in hysterics mm. and I was crying with laughter <laughs> every day and then would go home and be like, did I do anything <laughs> Lord Debling, he is eager to take a wife this season. You look especially beautiful tonight, Miss Featherington. Having the privilege to play these amazing women through four seasons now, or Three and the, the yeah, spin-off. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What have each of you learned about yourself through playing your characters? It, it has really made me confident to say what you're doing is okay, Golda, you know, and um, be confident that you're a good actress and that you're a good storyteller. Do you know what I mean? Because it, it's, it's, this was, it was a really positive experience very and very moving. moving for me, very, mm. very moving for me. Because I don't know whether I think that all the time. Do you know what I mean? That I have, I don't know whether I'm confident all the time in the work that I'm putting out. You know, that's insecurity or whatever you feel like you're a faker or sometimes, do you know what I mean? An imposter syndrome, all of that kind of stuff. But this girl changed the way I think about myself now. Wow. Yeah, and the work that I do. I would say that these ladies, the, the, the cast, the crew, I would say that they have changed my outlook on, on this kind of work. I would mm. say that. I've, I've enjoyed the friendships that I've, I've discovered mm. through all of this. And, uh, yeah, I can't top that. I can't. Mm. 
<laughs> and storytelling is really powerful. And um, what Bridgerton gives is it gives a, a, a it gives a canvas that goes global that allows us to tell stories that say to everybody, you're great. Mm. We see you. We mm -hmm. hear you. Come on in. Whoever you are, you're welcome. Come and be part of this this um, uh, extraordinary up and down fabulous show that we do. And I and I think. Storytelling is really powerful and, uh, and, and for me what's been brilliant about this job is I get to um, sit in the power of that story on a global stage. What is the primary force that guides us along our paths? Is it our minds or our hearts?